Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive TV Peer Exchange. This program will feature expert panel discussions focused on updates in ovarian and cervical cancer. My name is Dr. Maury Markman, and I am president of Medicine and Science, the clinical unit of Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Michael Beer, MD, PhD, Professor, Department of Medicine at Harvard Medical School, and Director of Gynecologic and Medical Oncology at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Robert Berger, MD, Professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and Director of Clinical Research, Division of Gynecologic Oncology, University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Warner Ha, Professor and Director, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Division of Gynecologic Oncology at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and Senior Scientist, UAB Comprehensive Cancer Center, Birmingham, Alabama. James Tate Thigpen, Professor of Medicine and Director, Division of Hematology and Oncology at the University of Mississippi School of Medicine, Jackson, Mississippi. Thank you again for joining us today. Let's get started. Screening and prevention of ovarian cancer will be our first section. In March of 2014, the Society of Gynecologic Oncology released a clinical practice statement that women diagnosed with epithelial, ovarian, tubal, and peritoneal cancers should be considered for genetic counseling and testing, even in the absence of a family history. In September of 2014, Dr. Mary Claire King wrote in a paper published in JAMA that it is time to offer genetic screening of BRCA1 and BRCA2 to every woman at about age 30 in the course of routine medical care. Are we at the point where all women should be screened for BRCA mutations, or should we focus on testing all women with a history of ovarian cancer? Mike, what's your opinion at this point? Well, as you know, um, historically, we've uh, identified 8 to 10 percent of ovarian cancers associated with strong family histories. These are the women who have mutations in BRCA1 and 2. We now uh, know that for women who come in with ovarian cancer into the clinic, so there's an additional uh, 8 to 10 percent uh, that do not have family histories uh, but have germline mutations. And so certainly women who diagnose with ovarian cancer, I'm uh, a pretty strong believer at this point that they all should undergo germline testing. But this question is a little different. This is looking at the general population with a broad uh, screening approach in sequencing both BRCA1 and 2. One needs to recognize that ovarian cancer is still a rare tumor. Uh, this is going to be extremely uh, costly um, and uh, I think but not particularly cost effective. Um, so I would not support this in the general population at this time. Any other uh, comments or suggestions about Yeah, I mean, I think if you're going to screen the general population, you need a mechanism for counseling and follow-up. And I just don't think that the country is ready to do all that counseling with genetic counseling and follow-up in women that happen to test positive. And so I just don't think that as Mike was saying, that the data is out there to justify global testing for all women. But certainly there are selection factors that need to be considered, including family history and ethnicity. Uh, so in the Ashkenazi Jewish population, there's been some argument uh, for universal testing in, in, in pockets of the population uh, with a high prevalence. Any other comments? Uh, obviously, this is going to be a question that's going to be debated, and as more information comes up, they'll probably modifications or recommendations. So the next question.